The cyclopropanation of an alkene can be achieved by treatment of the alkene with a haliform, commonly chloroform or bromoform, along with a fairly strong base, such as terbutoxide, for instance. The product of this approach is a dihalo cyclopropane. An alternative strategy for the formation of cyclopropane rings is a named transformation called the Simmons-Smith reaction. In this process, an alkene is treated with diiodomethane as well as a zinc-copper couple. And this time, the product is simply a cyclopropane ring. We'll consider the mechanism of both transformations, but let's begin with the process that utilizes a haliform and a strong base like terbutoxide. The reaction begins with the removal of a proton from the haliform by the base. This deprotonation yields a carbanion, which is somewhat stabilized by the inductive electron withdrawal of the halogens. The subsequent dissociation of a halide from the carbanion affords a dihalo carbene. This process can be termed an alpha elimination because the proton and the halide that were lost were lost from the same carbon. This is in contrast to a beta elimination in which the proton and the halide lost are removed from adjacent carbons. The dihalo carbene is electron deficient because it possesses only six electrons around it rather than the desired octet. And for this reason, it can be attacked by the alkene pi bond. Simultaneously, the lone pair of electrons on the carbene attacks the alkene carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. Notice that since both new carbon-carbon bonds are formed simultaneously, this must be a syn addition. In the Simmons-Smith reaction, Zinc that is donated from the zinc-copper couple inserts into a carbon-iodine bond of diiodomethane. This results in a species known as a carbenoid. It has carbene-like behavior, but does not formally possess the two sigma bonds and one lone pair that is the hallmark of a true carbene. Nevertheless, this carbenoid behaves like a carbene because the carbon-zinc bond is polarized towards carbon and the carbon-iodine bond is polarized towards the iodine. The carbenoid is attacked by the alkene pi bond and this results in the displacement of iodide. Simultaneously, electrons from the carbon-zinc bond attack the alkene carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. And this results in the formation of the cyclopropane product. In this specific example, a symmetrical alkene reactant is used. However, even when the alkene is unsymmetrical, Regiochemistry is not an issue in cyclopropanation because the same group is added to each alkene carbon. In this transformation, the alkene is treated with the dibromocarbene that results from the reaction between bromoform and a reasonably strong base like terbutoxide. The alkene pi bond attacks the carbene and the carbene simultaneously attacks the alkene carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. The product is the geminal dibromo cyclopropane. Notice that no stereocenters were formed during this particular reaction. 
so we need not necessarily use wedges and dashes when drawing the product. In other words, this representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. However, since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible that no stereocenters will be formed during the reaction, but it is also possible that one or even two stereocenters may be formed. Let's first examine a reaction in which a single stereocenter is formed. This is a Simmons-Smith reaction in which the alkene substrate is treated with the carbonoid that comes from diiodomethane's treatment with a zinc-copper couple. The alkene pi bond attacks the carbon, displacing iodide, and electrons from the carbon-zinc bond then simultaneously attack the alkene carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. The result is a cyclopropane, but in this instance a stereocenter is formed during the reaction, and the carbonoid could have added from above or below the flat or trigonal planar alkene substrate. As a result, two enantiomeric cyclopropane products are formed. Now let's turn our attention to a Simmons-Smith reaction that leads to the formation of two stereocenters. When this new alkene substrate is treated with the carbonoid, the cyclopropane products each contain two stereocenters. But Although two stereocenters are formed, only a subset of the four possible stereoisomers result. Specifically, the carbonoid could add from above or from below the alkene substrate. And so the products are solely the syn enantiomers. While it is always important to be on the lookout for internal symmetry, it is especially important to do so in reactions where the same group is added to each carbon of a pi bond. This Simmons-Smith reaction is very similar to the one we saw on the previous slide. However, the product of this reaction contains an internal plane of symmetry it is therefore a meso compound and has no enantiomer. So in this case, there is only a single reaction product, despite the fact that two stereocenters were formed during the course of the reaction. In summary, the cyclopropanation of an alkene is accomplished by treatment with a haliform and base or through the use of the Simmons-Smith reagent. The addition of the carbene or carbinoid, respectively, is a syn addition. And there are no carbocation intermediates in this transformation, so no rearrangement is observed. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.